can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles Well, you know, I've, I've, um, I've done a funny thing lately and because I've I've had so many introductions in my life and 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 some of them have made me like practically tear up and and wish that I was that person being introduced and, and then I realized I was and and some of them made me want to spend time with that person which which is always good like well I want to be more I, I want to be more like the person that I you know I want to develop more of that side of myself as it were as the, of the parts that the introducer talked about but i've had so many introductions that that really left me flat or didn't feel they fully covered the job and and so uh, although i haven't told very many of the people that come to be interviewed uh, i'm actually going to uh, ask jade to do a lot of her own introduction because because who you were really is only a piece of who you are. And I, and I want to know, and I want to let the audience know who you are now, not just, you know, who you were. And, and, and we'll bring up your history. And, and the reason you're on the show with me is because, um, because you are a leader in the law movement and because you are teaching people how to improve their lives and, and become healthier, happier, more productive uh, in, in what we would call clear, congruent, scientifically sound practices and principles. Um, it's not the, the gimmick of the week club at all for you, Jade, and, and really never has been. So, um, but, but you do have a lot of history, and and so we'll just we'll just recognize that by being on the show, uh, you've already stepped into that uh, respected and credible leadership role uh, that are the people who who come to be with me and and spend some time here, and and I'm just honored that you want to spend some time with me uh, in the middle of the night all the way <laughs> around the world uh you're you're four you're actually only four time no six time zones ahead of me but uh six time zones ahead of me uh, you know it's eight o'clock at night here so folks i mean be very appreciative that, that jade is here with us at two in the morning to start a show and with a smile <laughs> and bless you thank you so much for being here jay thank you so much for having me it's an absolute honor um i'm just so grateful to be here and i'm so grateful to you um your book has changed my life and it's changing the life of so many people's um lives um people that i share my day with um when i say my day my social media day with and it's just an absolute honor i can't tell you what an honor it is for me to be on this show it's great well uh, again it's it's at the risk of being mutual admiration society but we'll get on with the show and, and we'll bring out the rest as we go and and um as people can, can probably tell, Jade has an accent, not me. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's Australian. Uh, yeah. Where in Australia did you grow up, Jade? Where, you, where um, do you hear from? Um, South Australia. Most people haven't heard of it. It's um, Adelaide. Um, oh, Adelaide. It's not Adelaide, yeah, it's not Sydney or Melbourne, Adelaide, yeah. Or Perth. Not Perth. Yeah, <laughs> right down under, yeah. I and mean, that's about, for most people, Sydney and Sydney and Perth, that's about as far as they can go, as far as naming cities, but. Yeah, and Melbourne, yeah, pretty Melbourne, much. Melbourne, yeah. And Botany Bay. 
And Botany Bay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but Adelaide, it's it's um a little bit more like a four season kind of place, isn't it? Yes. It's, you have winter and you have a good cold winter and a good hot summer and and is that still home? Is Adelaide still home? Oh, Adelaide will always be my home, um, whether I'm there or not. It's still my home. It's where I've lived my whole life, where I was born. So no matter what, it's my home. Yeah. Fantastic. And and picking out the parts that were probably um, that you consider to be interesting. What? What was it about your childhood that led to you becoming who you are now? Bring us back to uh, six-year-old Jade and ten-year-old Jade. And, oh, what was six. what was life like growing up? Um, well, you I was brought up. Or was it rural? No. Well, I mean, I grew up in it, it's classed as a city, but I grew up in the hills. I grew up in a town called Belair. Um, so it's very hilly, um, lots of gum trees, you know, you can see koalas and, I mean, you don't see kangaroos hopping around, but if you went to the local park and went around, you would see kangaroos and things like that. Um, very cold in winter, um, very warm, hot in summer, bushfire territory um, come summer. So um, the two extremes. Um, I had, a, I had a great childhood. I mean, we had kids all around my neighbourhood. We rode bikes. We, um, I used to run little shops. I was a bit of an entrepreneur as a kid. <laughs> so I was always running, you know, little shops or schools and trying to make, you know, little money um, <laughs> from the you other kids. And sisters? I had one sister. A young, I mean, I still have. I had yeah. a younger sister. Yeah, so grew up, we're about two and a half years apart. So grew up with her and grew up with lots of kids in the street, similar ages. It was a fabulous place to grow up. We grew up playing in creeks and, you know, riding down big hills, no handles and how we survived, I don't know. So we were, yeah, crazy sort of daredevil sort of kids. I had a, as a child, yeah, great childhood, definitely. What, what? What called your name? Were you a musician? Were you into animals? Were you doing sports? Um, yeah, I was into sports as a kid. I played netball, basketball, athletics. Um, I was a sprinter, did high jump, long jump. I was a sports captain at school. So I was always heavily involved in um, sports um, up until I was a teenager. Yeah, I was always involved in sports and um always involved in anything active. I was a pretty active kid. And and if you were going to describe food in the family, typical meals, average oh, food? Typical, you know, I grew up as a normal, when I say normal, how, you know, most people did meat and three veg, you know. Uh, uh, Nothing, nothing like I'm eating now. That's for sure. I, I yeah. ate a standard, you know, meat and three veg and two pieces of fruit a day, and that was, you know, my life. Well, I'm sure, people ask you because they ask me all the time yeah. if I've always eaten the way that I eat now. Yeah, you know, and they have a hard time conceiving of the fact that I was raised on, you know, Oreos and ice cream and Mars bars and candy and oh yeah and lots of cakes and cookies and and sure we had we had meat and veg but um we had more than our fair share of sweets and and and, and honestly i don't know how i survived childhood uh, when i look back on it i'm i'm shocked that i survived childhood and i'm watching kids do it still today and they're suffering but i'm watching them survive they have a chance to grow out of it so, did did you do you have a health history that I mean we're going to get to what really drove you to become who you are now? But was it a health thing? Was it a environmental thing? What what's your background? Because you were a healthy kid. Yeah, I was. Until, I mean, when I until when? 
Mm. Um, I mean, when I say I was a healthy kid, I ate sweets and treats and lollies and all those things too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I loved lollies, especially what kid doesn't, you know, you give a kid lolly. We call them lollies. I think you call them candy. Um, yeah, what kid doesn't? But where did it, um, things start to change? My athletic coach when I was 13 suddenly died. That I think was a bit of a turning point in my life. Um, he was a huge male um, role model for me in my life. He was a big part of my life. Um, he'd always cheer me on. He was, you know, at every racing event, just cheering me on. And I don't know. I often, I often think, where did things go wrong? But I spiralled a little bit out of control. Um, I went to a private school. There were a lot of drugs in my school, um, and I started to experiment with, you know, marijuana. And as I got a little bit older, I started to experiment with heavier drugs. Um, and, yeah, I became a bit of a wayward teenager, so to speak. I guess that's all there's way to put it. <laughs> no, well, I mean, it, we, we appreciate your honesty. And, I mean, that yeah. was then and this is now. And, you know, it's not going to be held against you in any way. It's always to your benefit, I think. But, um Okay, so then, where did that where did that lead you? So you're a teenager, you're doing that kind of wild and woolly stuff, and 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 did you make it to twenty and and you're still wild and crazy, Jade, or what happened? Um, well, wild and crazy. I, I think I'm <laughs> I think I'm a healthy wild and crazy person now, but no, wild and crazy. Yeah. Um, well, I had my son at 18, so that slowed me down a fair bit and followed by I had my daughter by age 20. So before I was 21, I had two, two kids. So that slowed me down a fair bit. Um, it wasn't until after that I started to um, get, in, get back into some of my wicked ways, so to speak, um, and predominantly alcohol. Alcohol I, was always my drug of choice. Um, you know, alcohol is so socially acceptable and, you know, you don't realise it creeps up on you so quickly. Like one minute, you know, you think you're only having one or two drinks, but um, someone like me who's susceptible to binge drinking, um, one's never enough and one turns into two or three days of drinking and it's heavy partying and heavy drinking. And, you know, bit by bit, your life starts to really spiral out of control and it's heavy stuff, you know, it, yeah. And it just got worse and worse. And, okay, you well, know, I, we just had a, we're just having a slight technical glitch with Jade's story at the moment. Okay. You can pause for a moment because you're you're pretty much frozen. Uh, oh, now you're on. <laughs> oh, right. Well, I'm fixing my hair. <laughs> frozen, but but right at a very heavy moment there. I mean, yeah. You are being a, you're a mother of two, yeah. which I find I I find incredible. I mean, the responsibility of a mom to take because yeah. especially when the kids are little, the mm -hmm. job's like all it's all belongs to mom. I mean, yeah. there's nobody else can do it. It's all mom's job. Yeah. And yet, and yet you were also leading a living a second life. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I was living a second life. That's a really great way of putting it. Um, yeah, there were two lives, two faces, two faces, so to speak. But um, it's um, it's not a good environment. Um, I don't think anywhere where alcohol is involved is a good environment for children. Um, I mean, it's not a good environment for adults, but it's certainly not. <laughs> it's not a good environment for children, that's for sure. Um, you know, when booze involved, it's just it's horrible, and you you're not as attentive as you should be. You're not give, um, putting in the time and energy that you should be. Um, you know. How I, I sometimes I think when I look back and I look at the person that I was and I think, wow, I don't even know how I got through it and I don't know how my kids got through it. I just think, wow, it, you know, through the grace of God, 
they're here and they're fine and they, you know, they're good kids. But you just, I sort of look back and think, wow, I was out of control. I, I really got to a point where I was really out of control. And so what's um, that? You're like 23, 24, 25. How old were you? And when did you realize something had to give? Um, I was 29 when I, that was the final time I said enough's enough. Um, life was, it had got pretty bad. Um, and I knew, I knew, um, I, my mum had had my kids for a couple of days. I'd been, um, you know, partying over the weekend and um, I'd looked at my skin in the mirror, which I had quite a few times, you know, and your skin's very yellow and pasty and you've, you had no sleep. And I can remember looking at myself and I, you know, look in the mirror and say, what are you doing to yourself? And I would have full conversations with myself and I would be off my face and I'm talking to myself in the mirror and saying, look what you've done to yourself. What are you doing? Um, you know, and I can remember I looked and it was so bad and I used to get very sick because I had peptic ulcers because I drank so heavy and I used to bring up bile every, every morning without a shadow of doubt, I'd bring up like just yellow bile and it was disgusting. And um, I, and I could, I, I'd finished looking at myself and, I, and then I was sick and I just, something that day just said, I'm not doing this anymore. And I don't know how I had the strength to get through. Um, it wasn't easy. You know, I talk about it now and it sounds pretty blase. But at the time, it was very hard. And but I made that decision. I just I knew I couldn't do it anymore. My life was crap. It was it was crap. And I, I had to make changes. I had to. Well, good for you. And and so, what did you do? How did you how did you claw your way out of that hole? Well. For about four days after, I was very sick. I was in a very bad way. Um, I, I used to take amphetamines as well to keep me going. So I was coming down off amphetamines, coming off booze. I was very sick. I was shaking. You jump out of your skin. It's, you know, it's like tremors. And, um, you know, <laughs> when people I talk about detox, sometimes I'm thinking, yeah, you you, you go through this, you know, heavy, heavy detox. It's, yeah, people it's, talk about <laughs> detoxing from potatoes. It's a whole nother yeah. thing. Yeah, this is like heavy, heavy, heavy. And I was just in hot and cold sweats for days, um, jumping out of my skin. Um, I was in a bad way. And then when I started to come down, I, you know, part of me wanted to get back into it, you know, because that's that's that side oh, that Lord, wants to pull me, lure you back in. And um, I openly admit it now. I never used to talk about it years ago because I think the more... I've grown in my life, the easier it is to put it out there and let people know. And I'm always more than happy to put my sobriety story out there. It's something I preach heavily um, because I just, I want people to know that thing, that it is possible to change your life. And um, I did attend AA. And at, at first when I was going to AA, I was going up to 10 times a week. Now that's a lot of AA meetings. Yeah. Um, and yeah, sometimes I was going two times a day, sometimes even three, trying to find a third AA meeting. So it's pretty full on. And you hear the same stories over and over because they just, they go round and round. But you hear some full on stories, like full on, like you think, wow. And you, you, you start to take them in. And I, look, I would look at women and I'd say, you know what? I'm nearly there. I'm nearly where she is. And um, I really, I started taking it in and, you know, I'd, I'd listen attentively. Um, I shared stuff in that meeting that I've probably never shared ever again with other human beings, you know, I, because you carry a lot of shame, you carry a lot of guilt um, and you need to let that guilt out. You need to let that shame out. You need to talk about it, you know, and... Um, I'd tell my story and bit by bit I got more and more out and um, I haven't been to an AA meeting probably now for nine years but um, at the time they were brilliant for me they gave me what I needed 
I truly did. And I also focused on, um, I was really fortunate actually, I got involved with um, a club and they needed someone to organise their events and everything else and I just dive right into it. I'm an organiser. I love organising people and those kind of things. And I was just so lucky that this came about because I just dedicated all my time to that. I think it's so important that you're not idle. Um, if you have idle time when you're trying to beat addictions. Well, yeah, I mean, they say idle time is like the devil's handy or something. Absolutely. And it's, it's very easy to be led back into the devil's playground, that's for sure. So, yeah. Um, that was a blessing in disguise, that's for sure.